Hi, my name is Anthony Gettig, and I'm a full-time working voiceover talent located in Southwest Michigan. I work from my home studio, and earlier this year, in 2021, I posted a uh, video that was an update to my studio tour. Well, we not only have an update, but actually, I've really actually completely overhauled my studio. In fact, I'm sitting in the very spot that used to be the uh, door to my Whisper Room vocal booth. So the booth is gone. I'm working in an open room now, and I'm going to show you around the new studio space. Here we go. So here we are just outside the studio. I am uh, in my living room, and so you can see my commute is like right here. So uh, let's go on in, huh? Let's walk in here, and you notice as I walk in, it gets pretty dead. <laughs> I love it. Let me show you around the studio, and you can see what's going on. So as we first walk in, yes, we're recreating this for video. First walk in, just uh, here's a look around the room from right to left. And you can see uh, there's no booth here, but it's pretty dead. Yeah, it sure is. Um, what we have on the wall here, we have some acoustic treatment panels. I don't know if you hear that, but a big semi truck is going by. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> we have some acoustic panels. Um, these are prime acoustic and honestly, I, I don't know why anybody would buy foam anymore if, if, when these are available. They're, they're simply amazing. I do still have some foam right there that there's a bass trap up there and you'll note that I've got one up there and down here. I have bass traps in every corner because that is one of the secrets. You really, you really got to have bass traps to, uh, get a lot of the low end stuff. Uh, out of your recordings. Uh, okay, so anyways, we'll, we'll come back to some of the knickknacks. But the uh, desk is here. All this is is a Guitar Center studio desk thingy without the top on it. Um, it's plenty of space for me. And you can see I have a little pile of my bags and things and clipboard stuff there. A little trash can, another bass trap in the corner there. Uh, the monitors, we'll talk about those. Microphone is hanging there. And I have, because I also do some music, I have a little rack of gear there and my uh, awesome little guitar amp. I'm telling you, it's tiny, but the sound is huge. Uh, then we have a closet, which might be my favorite feature because behind the curtain is a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> and I can hide it, it's great. Uh, another corner here, here are my guitars currently. Uh, we've got uh, four electrics and a bass and then um, yeah, more of the corner here. If you know what that is, you're an old timer like me. Love it. It's empty. Another bass trap up there. Um, down below, I have my former studio monitors. And um, yeah, again, we'll talk about monitors here in just a minute. And then coming over here, just there's what's behind me out into the living room. So let's swing around here and take a look at the desk, see what we got going on here. Uh, let's talk about the monitors real quick. These monitors are the Cali LP6s. It was, uh, I think, $300 for the pair. So we've got them in stereo. I have them on some stands here. And I love those monitors. Uh, wow. Like, I didn't know what I was missing. Highly recommended. Just a great bang for the buck. 300 bucks at the time of this recording for the uh, Cali LP6s. Just... I hear music through these, and I'm telling you, I've heard things in songs I've listened to for nearly 40 years. I'm, I actually heard new things that I, just base information I never heard before. Great stuff. Uh, of course, every desk has to have the TP. Uh, there we have <laughs> Strong Bad. Strong Bad watches over everything here. Magic Eight Ball. Uh, we have Pro Tools. We're running. Um, that's what I use most of the time. I also use Twisted Wave. This is a widescreen monitor, so I can get more on the screen. Um, let's see here. Okay, left to right. We have a MIDI controller keyboard, and then a uh, very, very cheap one. Um, console 1 for the uh, Console 1 uh, plug-in that I use usually with, with music stuff. Whoop, I have my fader port here. That was the uh, camera. Batteries getting knocked down. Uh, fader port here for when I'm mixing and doing production. Very, very handy to have a nice tactile feel for that. And it's kind of cool. It's motorized faders. Um, big knob. This is wonderful because this way I can um, 
control the volume of the monitors without having to reach over to the rack. I, I really like this. And it will let me have actually a second set of monitors, which if you take a look, I do have another set of monitors. These are the um, iLoud from IK Multimedia. They're not hooked up right now. They were inside my booth for quite a while, um, but I am gonna hook them up and they're ready to go. And they will go into the big knob, which is just, just wonderful. Uh, some USB hubs back there and whatnot. Oh, and I love this. This is cool. Hold on a minute. Let me, can you see that? Oh yeah. The colors when the lights are out, it's just, yeah. Cause you know, you can't record voiceovers without a cool vibe. Um, headphones, very simple headphones. Uh, I do have some nice buyer dynamics that I'll use for mixing if I want to. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, hard drives in the toaster there. There's me and Chris Lord Algae at uh, Sweetwater Gear Fest a few years ago. Uh, I have my microphone is on a scissor boom. And um, right now the Rode NT1 is hooked up. And uh, I, I don't think they make this one anymore the, with, a, with the mic, um, with the shock mount the way it is. It also comes with a shock mount that goes right into here, but I don't use that. This is actually a um, Mackie, I think windscreen that fits over it perfect i got the the windscreen to see if it would work with my tlm 103 it did not but it works perfect on the road okay over here a couple of really inexpensive guitar pedals i'm experimenting with these as outboard gear but i also use them with the guitar some picks oh what else some fast fret this little katana amp i'm telling you i'm gonna do a separate video just on this thing man it is incredible uh big sound really and it's tiny, so you can drive it and just, oh, it's just beautiful. Uh, let's see here, microphone hooked up, which goes right into down here. So let's talk about the rack. Um, here we have on the top, this is the Focusrite 18i20, which gives me eight mic pre's, um, eight outs, actually more than that. But anyways, uh, right below that is, a, uh, an, is an XLR patch bay. And so I, I have a, a snake actually to go from, from here, from the patch bay to the back of the 18i20. So that way I'm not trying to reach around back to plug mics in. I just plug in up front and yeah, I'm good to go. Uh, I also have just below that a Behringer, what is that called? The Ultra Gain Digital. So this is just an ADAT connected, more mic pre's, inputs and outputs. That's all. Um, not super high quality, but I didn't really need it. I really needed it more for outboard gear. Below that, a uh, patch bay. And then my Yamaha SPX90, which, yes, it works. It's a beautiful thing. Um, below that, an, a DBX um, mic pre, the 286S. I, you know, I got it for free. Um, so it, it's in the rack. And then uh, I love this. I had to buy a drawer. Let me see if I can get that open with one hand. How am I gonna do that? There we go. The drawer is great. I've got strings, I've got just stuff in there. I mean, you gotta, everybody's got a junk drawer, right? And then the power at the bottom. Very cool. I love my rack. Uh, it's just, yeah, it fits me really well. And then on the floor, we have a Zoom G3XN guitar processor that is <laughs> really cool. Uh, fits my needs nice. And uh, yeah, good stuff. And then of course the closet, here we go. We have the guitars. I gotta show you the guitars. Uh, this is the uh, Eddie Van Halen's and EVH, um, very basic guitar. Next we have the Strat, it's a purple Strat, love it. Have a uh, Les Paul Epiphone and then a Fender, well, a Squire. Both both the, the Strat and the Tele are Squires, but they're good. Um, Telecaster and then a bass. Lots of, it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's active pickups. It's really, man, it's got some oomph. So for what I do, this is fabulous. And then, as I mentioned in the corner there, we've got, uh, we've got a nice little, um, cart there and then the door. I do have a little foam on the doors just to stop reflection. Um, here we have a book, a children's book. It's called the three brothers. And this was written by Betty Vining, which is my mother-in-law, and illustrated by A.J. Shokorzade. Shokorzade. That is my daughter, Ashley. And uh, Grandma, the story came to her in the night. It's a great story. 
Ashley illustrated it and had it published. <laughs> she self-published it. It's awesome. Um, and by the way, you can get that on Amazon. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Reel of tape. This is what um, commercials used to come like at a radio station. This is how they would come. Is on a little reel of tape. You'd load this up and put it on a cart. Let me grab the... Here's the cart. Let's carry that with me for a minute. As you can see, there's no tape in here. This is just a shell. But basically... You know what? These should probably be, probably be together. Let's just do that. There we go. Um, the reel would have the commercial, and then that would get carted up, and that's what you'd play on the air. Pretty cool. This is um, something I was really anal about back in the day. This is leader tape. So I would use leader tape to eliminate a lot of the hiss in between takes. Um, I would edit, I would splice on leader tape, and there, it makes no sound. It's just leader tape. Uh, okay, so let's talk about these panels. Okay, these are solid panels. They're it's they're solid, but they're super lightweight and like for real. Like I can't imagine. I mean, you hear how dead it is in here. I, I really can't imagine ever buying foam again. Seriously, uh, uh, whether it's you know Oralex or otherwise, these Prime Acoustic panels are incredible. These are what four by two, I think, and then these are one by one I, I i don't know but these are just some extra squares that come around basically in the kit that i got i think i got eight of these and 12 of these and you put them in the right spots and get them nice and level and looking good they just they just look good you guys um but they work so well um i'm really blown away uh there's another reel of tape and there's some drumsticks for the v drums that are in the closet so anyways, back to these. Uh, oh, and I got to show you this. My friend Hugh made that for me. Thank you, Hugh. It is right here in the studio. Um, they're lightweight. It's like, if you were to look at the back of them, it's like an insulation kind of thing. Um, but it's lightweight and they hang. They're super easy to hang. Even I, Mr. Non-Mechanical, was able to hang these. And uh, yeah, just fabulous. Uh, it just sounds so good. And the curtains, El Cheapo de Walmart, uh, <laughs> that's it. We are working on getting some uh, plugs for the windows, because I only have two windows in here. I have that one, and I have that one. And we are looking to get those uh, covered up to keep noise out. And as far as air, I don't know if you can see it down there. The, the register, the well, some of the things are kind of bent and broken, but that's the air for air conditioning and heat. And... Um, it's great because all the ducts underneath zigzag here, there, and everywhere. So by the time it comes out of there, no noise. It's fabulous. And there's the drum throne. So there you go. That's pretty much uh, that's pretty much the studio. Okay, so we are done looking at most of the studio here. Uh, the closet, you know, again, storage and extra this, that, and the other. Microphones, cables, bins of this, that, and the other. Mixers, what have you. I got to tell you, um, I was just talking to a guy this morning who said, man, don't you, aren't you ever concerned, you know, about big noises outside? Cause you know, I had the window open and some trucks went by. It's like, you know what? Uh, he's like, Hey, when do you think you might get another booth? You think you ever will? And I thought, no, I don't think I will. I really don't because I don't need it here. Here's the thing. Even with the whisper room, if a big semi truck went by or a motorcycle or um, or if they're mowing the park, mowing the lawn at the park that's right across the street from me, I'm done. I can't record. I just I just can't. And you might think that's a showstopper. It really isn't. Well, it is when they're mowing the lawn. You just take a break. <laughs> but uh, when a big truck goes by or a motorcycle, even with the booth, there was there was just no getting around that. I mean, I would have to stop and, and restart, even on a live session, on a live directed session, Source Connect or Ip Diddle or any of those, um, you still had to stop and just pick it up. And I thought, you know what, if I've got to stop for that stuff with a booth, why, why keep the booth? So I was able to sell the booth to a fine young man, not far away, he's probably an hour, hour and a half away, and he could really use it. And I was really glad to sell it to him. And I'm so glad to have this space here. Um, I, it's just so comfortable, you guys. It's just so comfortable. 
And when I'm, I mean, uh, plenty of room, plenty of room. I'm not squeezing around this, that, you know, I'm not worried about where to store things. It's just for, for me, I mean, I'm sure somebody watching this might think, oh my gosh, look at all that clutter. But for me, I'm telling you, this is about as clutter free as I've ever been. <laughs> I love it. And I can sit here, I can do my work. I, I sit right here in this spot here with the scissor boom and do my recording and editing and the uh, the drum stool behind me, usually uh, uh, my wife or uh, now my son uh, has been assisting me. They'll just spot me while I'm recording to make sure I'm recording the right stuff and uh, catching any errors on the way in. So honestly, for for just voiceover, this is this is way more than you would ever need. I'm also doing music in here, and and I'm also doing production. I do fully produced stuff from commercials to, uh, you know, I've done some film post production, uh, dubbing projects. Uh, I've also recorded uh, whole songs in here. So I'm doing more than just VO, but it is what I use every day as a working voiceover talent. Anyways, I hope uh, this has been helpful to you and instructional maybe, and maybe motivational. I don't know. Maybe uh, you could, you know, show a video or a picture of your home studio. We'd love to see it down in the comments. So Anyways, that's about it for now. We're very happy with our studio space. This, this is my happy place. <laughs> Until next time, take care and God bless.